Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving into the mysterious world of the Pope, also known as the Hierophant, the fifth card in the Major Arcana. This archetype is one of the most profound and rich in symbolism and meaning, offering a gateway into understanding the spiritual journey, moral authority, and the role of tradition in our lives. So whether you are a seasoned tarot reader or just curious, this card is rich with meaning, symbolism, and tradition. So buckle up as we explore how this archetype connects the sacred with the mundane and how it can guide us in our spiritual journey. The term Pope comes from Papa in Italian and Spanish, meaning father. This title isn't just for show. It dates back to ancient Rome, where the emperor was called Pontifex Maximus, or priest of priests. This title signifies a build bridger, which is fitting for the Pope's role as a mediator between the human and the divine. The Pope is the ultimate bridge builder, connecting heaven and earth. The Latin root pontis, meaning bridge, captures this perfectly. In the tarot, the Pope wears a triple crown and carries a cross here, symbolizing his authority over body, soul, and spirit. Three fundamental aspects of existence. He's the spiritual leader holding the keys to the kingdom of heaven often depicted in gold and silver, representing the sun and the moon. These keys symbolize the dual aspects of spiritual power and link the Pope to the magician and the high priestess, acting as a conduit between these two worlds, who represent the active and passive forces in the Tarot. The Pope acts as a mediator, re receiving divine wisdom from above and transmitting it to the earthly realm. You might hear the term Hierophant used interchangeably with Pope in the Tarot. This is an important distinction because it emphasizes the Pope's role as an interpreter of the divine rather than just a figurehead of religious authority. The Hierophant is like the ancient Greek priest who revealed sacred mysteries to initiates. His role is to guide us through the labyrinth of spiritual and esoteric knowledge, challenging us to dig deeper into our spiritual beliefs and encouraging us to seek a more profound connection with the divine and to understand the secret traditions that have been passed down through generations. Now let's break down the visuals. The Pope is usually seated between two pillars, which might remind you of the High Priestess card. These pillars represent duality, law, liberty, tradition, and innovation. The Pope sits in the middle, balancing these forces, symbolizing his role as a mediator who brings harmony between opposites. The two priests kneeling before him represent the transmission of spiritual knowledge and the importance of teaching and guiding others on their spiritual journey. Notice that the Pope's hand gesture, often shown in the act of blessing, this gesture with two fingers pointing upward and two downward symbolizes the connection between the spiritual and the material worlds, echoing the hermetic principle of as above, so below. This hand sign is a powerful reminder of the Pope's role as a bridge between heaven and earth, reinforcing his function as a spiritual guide who helps us align our earthly lives with higher divine principles. Now, let's talk about the number five, which is central to the card. In numerology, it's the midpoint between one and nine, symbolizing the balance between the material and the spiritual worlds. In the context of the Pope, the number five also represents the quintessence, the purest form of being, the spiritual essence that permeates all things. This concept is reflected in the Tarot's recurring motif of two pillars, two priests, the central figure of the Pope, which together create a structure that embodies the five elements, earth, water, air, fire, and spirit. This pentagram pattern formed by the five elements creates a symbol of divine law and spiritual protection. Understanding this symbolic framework is key to grasping the spiritual death of the Pope card. The Pope positioned at the center represents the sacred core of human experience, where all aspects of life converge. Now let's delve into the Pope's triple crown and cross staff. They aren't just decorative. They represent his mastery over the three realms of existence, the material world, 
the world of the soul, and the divine realm. The symbolism is mirrored in the triple cross staff, which is also an emblem of the Christian Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This triadic structure also reflects the human mind, as described by the neuroscientist Paul McLean. McLean's theory of the triune brain suggests that our brain has three parts. The reptilian brain, which is the guides our basic survival instincts, the limbic system, which guides our emotions and social behaviors, and the neocortex, which guides our higher cognitive functions like reasoning and spirituality. The Pope embodies this triune nature and symbolizing the integration of body, soul, and spirit in our pursuit of spiritual enlightenment. The Pope is also about tradition, religion, and authority. He's the figure who lays down the moral codes that have guided societies for centuries. But let's be real. This authority can also be rigid. The Pope's darker side includes orthodoxy, dogmatism, and the imposition of strict moral codes that might stifle individual growth and creativity. Depending on your background, the Pope might evoke reverence or remind you of the oppressive side of organized religion. This duality is a key aspect of the Pope's archetype, reminding us to approach this card with an open mind and to consider both the positive and the negative connotations. As an archetype, the Pope also represents divine wisdom, urging us to trust in our inner self and have faith in something greater. He's like that wise old mentor who might be strict, but always has your best interest at heart. Something that seldom gets mentioned by many who write about the tarot is the fact that we're seeing the picture of an old guy in position of authority. We can also see this card as an ideal spiritual guide and companion to the emperor. If the emperor was the father figure, then this is the grandfather. So naturally, our relationship with grandparents might influence our understanding of this particular archetype. The popes throughout history have yet another aspect seldom discussed. Often, popes have been known to be great patrons of the arts. For us artists, the pope can be seen as an imaginary patron, encouraging us to infuse our work with spiritual purpose. It's a bridge to the divine. The creative process under the Pope's guidance becomes a sacred journey. It's about connecting with something greater than ourselves, using art to touch the divine and bring that higher understanding into the world. Fast forward to today, and the Pope card still has a lot to say. In our modern society, the concept of celibacy and virginity and priesthood often associated with the Pope can be difficult to grasp especially in an adolescentric society with a TikTok mindset that is increasingly focused on individual freedoms and self-expression. Plus, with all the scandals and corruption in religious institutions, many question the relevance of these traditions. But historically, celibacy wasn't always required. It became doctrine in 1139. Now the next tarot card, The Lovers, shows the triumph of natural desires over self-imposed rules, highlighting the tension between spiritual ideals and the human nature. In today's world, the Pope could be seen as a symbol of control, whether through religion, capitalism, or the mass media. He reminds us of the spiritual and moral authority that can be co-opted by material interests and challenge us to stay true to our personal beliefs. The Pope card also prompts us to think about how religious thought has evolved. After the Protestant Reformation, individualism became more important. People started taking responsibility for their own souls. This was a big shift from the idea that religion needed to be mediated by an institution. Today, many see religion as a personal experience, and the Pope card reminds us of the struggles that got us here. During the Counter-Reformation, many lives were lost as people fought for their right to interpret their faith in their own way, free from the constraints of the papal authority. This aspect of the Pope card highlights the ongoing tension between tradition and individualism, between the established order and the quest for personal spiritual truth. In our globalized world, the Pope takes on a new significance. We're more open to different religions and spiritual practices than ever before. 
with a plethora of New Age beliefs and global traditions available to us. This diversity can lead to greater empathy and understanding, but it also poses the risk of superficiality and the commodification of spirituality. The Pope encourages us to build a personal awareness of the divine, creating our own spiritual and philosophical foundations while remaining grounded in tradition. Now think of society as this huge library that's been stacking books for centuries. If you grab a book from the shelf, you get a pretty good idea of what's considered a classic. But if you decide, ah, I'm doing things my own way, you might end up wandering into the anime comic section thinking it's the philosophy aisle. A lot of folks ditched the rules they were fed as kids only to dive headfirst into the latest fad or cult, thinking they've found enlightenment. But they're still playing by the higher fence rules, just in a different outfit. It's like they've tossed out the map but forgot they still need to navigate. Now let's have a look at the Pope card from the Charo Neocolonial de las Americas, published by U.S. Games. In this version that I did, the papal figure sits as a mediator, not just between heaven and earth, but between past and present. He's holding a satellite dish, yes, you heard that right, while blessing two supplicants, representing the rich, powerful, and corporations. They take inspiration from the first transnational corporation in history, church. Above the Pope is a dollar bill. The all-seeing eye from the great seal reminding us of the power of an influence of institutionalized beliefs in human civilization this card isn't just about religion it's about the power of belief itself whether in religion capitalism or any other system that shapes our lives this card speaks of orthodoxy dogmatism and sanctimony but it also reveals our own naivete and susceptibility to conforming to the rules of society it is servitude and submitting blindly to an unquestioned belief imposed by tradition and mass consent. In a reading, this card can also be interpreted as receiving guidance and counsel from an old mentor. As we reflect on the archetype of the Pope, also known as the Hierophant, we are reminded of the deep connection between tradition, spiritual wisdom and the path of inner growth. The Pope encourages us to seek knowledge, not just for the sake of learning, but to apply it to, into our daily lives, elevating our spirit and aligning our actions with a higher purpose. In the words of the Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This reminds us that true creativity and wisdom come from within, from our ability to control our thoughts, our responses, and to channel our inner strength into meaningful creation. Just as the Pope guides us toward higher truths and spiritual discipline, we too can cultivate resilience and creativity by embracing our inner power, staying true to our path, and finding inspiration and the timeless wisdom that resides within us all. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and staying till the end. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell as well. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.